Hi, beautiful. How you doing today? Today, we're transforming this ratchet $100 wig into a beautiful, glamorous, red carpet ready $1,000 wig. You hear that? You're getting transformed today, honey. So actually this wig costed $135, but I rounded down to make a catchy title. Sorry about that. This wig is available on Amazon. I bought this directly from Amazon just like this. It is cute, but not that cute, honey. It is not wearable. We need to make her glamorous and red carpet ready, and we're gonna do just that today. Most of the time, celebrity hairstylists will buy wigs just like this, okay? They are raw. Nothing has really been done to them. They are that yellow color. They are just ready to be played with and manipulated into a beautiful, gorgeous, very expensive wig. We're gonna give this wig the celebrity treatment. It's gonna get plucked. It's gonna get cut. It's gonna get colored. We're gonna add some tracks into it and it is going to be transformed. You're not going to be able to recognize it by the end of this video. It's gonna go from drab to fab very fast, right before your eyes. I'm gonna show you some of the techniques celebrity hairstylists use to transform wigs and customize them for their celebrity clientele so that when they wear the wigs on the red carpet, you have no idea if it's their real hair or if it's a wig. And most of the time, if it's done very well, you'll have no idea that that person was wearing a wig. All right, I got my wig, I got these hands, I got a lot of color over here, so let's get started. Hi guys, you can't see my face anymore. <laughs> I'll be back on camera in a few, but first I'm gonna show you how you can add wefts to your wigs to make them more full or whatever you wanna do, add more volume. But here I'm just trying to add a little bit more fullness to our ends because they are lacking. So what we're gonna do is take our bundle over here. This is 18 inch bundle. Everything I'm using today will be linked below for you guys. Let's get a section right at the wefts. Towards the bottom of our hair would be good. I don't want more bulk at the top. Her, this wig is already really bulky. It's gonna make it even more voluminous and bulky. So I'm trying to go really low to the bottom of her hair. I'm just gonna measure out the length of this one and cut it to the right size. All right, as you can see, I just started sewing the weft in. It's really easy, you don't have to make it perfect. It's really not that serious. You're never gonna see these. Um, and you basically just go through the weft on the wig and then through the weft that you're attaching, go through it and then go back through the loop. And it makes like a little knot at the top. I am not an expert weave sewer, but this always works for me. Go right through that loop and you pull it tight and you just keep going. I go like every three quarters of an inch. And now you can pull on it and it won't come out. That is one weft. Um, I'm probably gonna do like one more. Let's put it underneath this one. And we're gonna cut them at the same length. We'll take our needle and thread and we'll start over here. And then you make the loop on the second one. So you pull that through and then loop it through the previous. And that's your first little knot. Shouldn't take very long. It's actually quite a quick process. If I were standing actually in front of the mannequin, this would be a lot easier for me, but I am standing off to the side and my back really hurts. And make sure when you are going through, you are going through the actual weft at the top of the hair and not underneath it. That way it's very sturdy. Otherwise it's just not gonna be Dirty. It's not gonna be in the hair very well. Ooh, it's so pretty. And there we go. We got a little bit more fullness going on. I think that's good. I think that'll do it. It's a subtle difference, but it'll make a big difference at the end. So now you can always make the hair thicker if you want. Of course, you can keep adding as many tracks as you want, as many tracks as you can fit in the hair, except I do tend to like when the hair is a little bit sparse at the bottom because naturally hair isn't that thick at the bottom anyways. So when it is a little tiny bit straggly, it just makes it look more real. You don't want to have all of that bulk at the bottom or else it's a telltale sign you're wearing a wig. You want to keep it natural. You don't want to go overboard. I know it's very easy when it's a wig to go overboard. Just 
calm down. Just stay in your lane, girl. Don't go too crazy. I know it's fun, but if you want it to look natural, just keep it a little bit more thin at the bottom. Now on to the fun part. Let's move on to doing color. So what I have mixed here for my root shadow is Goldwell 8NN with 7NA. I don't think you're really supposed to do that because one of them is a gray coverage, the 8NN, uh, which is double natural. And 7NA is a color on, so which is a demi permanent color in Goldwell. So that's exactly what I have on my hair, actually. That is the color I use, that really natural looking level seven on my hair without it being too dark, and without grabbing too dark onto my blonde hair. So what's gonna happen is that 8NN that we have in the formula, it's gonna act as kind of a barrier so it doesn't turn kind of muddy or green because when you don't fill the hair before applying color that is this dark, sometimes you can get that muddy kind of nasty color. So this is what I found to be the perfect root shadow for me. I love it. I use it on a lot of people. You can also add a little bit of gold pigment in there. That way it gives you even more filling properties um, when you're working on hair that is even more white than this. I mean, this is pretty yellow, so it's gonna give us a nice ash-toned root drop without it being overly ash-toned. It's gonna be beautiful, I hope. You never know what happens with these wigs. Sometimes color picks up really weird because of the chemicals they use to straighten them or color them. I'm sure it'll be fine. I did some tests earlier. It looked good. Then for our other color, kind of color. We're gonna be using Prismatic Glow, uh, my hair mask. Um, you can really use any hair mask you want. This is going to act as our barrier, okay? So we're just gonna put a bit of that into the bowl and we're gonna do some highlights with this. Now, because I'm not trying to actually put more lightness into her hair, I am using the conditioner in place of actual lightener. You'll see what I mean in a second. So basically, this is kind of what I'm going for. This sort of root shadow with some really nice highlights that are bright in the front, those money pieces, but we still want a lot of dimension in the hair. We don't want it to look flat and boring. So we're gonna do a lot of work here because right now it's kind of yellow and flat and boring. What we're gonna do first is add some foil highlights with our conditioner, and then we're gonna go in between all of those foil highlights we did with our root shadow. Okay, let's take out the front section here. We're just gonna give her little baby lights at the top. We don't want chunky highlights here. This is just gonna add a little bit of sparkle to her hair once the rest of it is all sort of dark around it, all right? It's gonna look really weird before we do the last toning process. That looks good. So that is gonna add a nice dimensional highlight at the top. And we'll just put the conditioner in there. And this is awesome too, because it's gonna really condition the hair while we're coloring. I'm just gonna add um, one more here at the top. We really don't want a lot of lightness showing through when we're done with this. I'm trying to go for a very smoked out kind of blonde look. Yeah, we're not gonna do too many highlights here. I'm gonna do a bit of a chunkier highlight underneath. We're going for high impact here, all right? And the cool part about Prismatic Glow is it colors the hair kind of pink temporarily until you wash it out. It's super fun. All right, I know I said that's the last one, but we're gonna do one more underneath that. We're just gonna take out another little slice and put that up, do another thick weave. And this is only our first round of kind of toning we're gonna do today. The second round will be after we wash everything out. Then we'll add another root glaze to these highlights that we're doing right now. And boom, just a few simple highlights. And we'll add one more. We wanna make sure that we don't color this section in the front, because this is our money piece, right? We all need a little money piece in our life. <laughs> so we're just gonna take out not the baby hairs, but the hair right behind it. That looks good. It's a little thick, but we're gonna do some plucking at the end anyway. So we're just gonna take this, put conditioner on it, and put it in a foil so that we don't touch it later. I don't usually foil with gloves on. I've already put them on. I don't wanna take them off again. It's making it really difficult. <laughs> I don't recommend it. All right, and that's our money piece. We're gonna keep that in that foil so it doesn't get colored by the darker stuff we're gonna put on right now. Boom, that's it, all right? So now that I have that side done, I'm gonna repeat the exact same process on the other side, and we're not gonna add any foils to the back of our hair, but we will have that highlight effect, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that when we get in the back. 
All right, so that is our conditioner foiling all done. We have a total of eight foils going on. We have two in the front and three on each side. These are kind of our baby lights and then these are our thick highlights underneath. This is just gonna add a beautiful amount of dimension on the top without it being over dimensional and overdone, okay? And then we're gonna work through the rest of the hair and sort of make highlights with our root shadow. So this is super easy. Just start painting away, all right? It's not that serious. Try to knock it on the lace because it is a dark color. However, pretty hard to avoid here. Just avoid it as much as possible. So I'm just gonna work through this section, pulling these sections back. And this is definitely much easier on a real human. I am also trying to show you guys at the same time. There's a lot going on right now. Because this is the side of her head and it's underneath the rest of the foils, what we're trying to do is create a lot of depth. So what you're gonna do here, bring this kind of low light root shadow formula pretty far down. It's gonna feel kind of unnatural to make the hair look so dark. At least that's how I feel it. I'm like, oh shoot, am I making the hair too dark? No, never. Like you always feel like you're going too far down with the root shadow, but usually you're not. And I'm not gonna go right on that hairline just because I don't want to make that lace dark. Um, so I'm just gonna go and section out just those baby hairs and not touch those. You can tell it's already getting darker. It kind of turns a weird color first. So don't be alarmed if you try this formula for the first time. It does uh, look a little bit weird. And now now we're gonna just see how the hair sits and I'm gonna lift this section up and I'm just gonna paint kind of a low light in here. You kind of want it random because we want it to look like hair painting and hair painting is a very artistic sort of random uh, application method of highlighting. So I'm just gonna take that piece of hair and I'm gonna go down really far with this low light because we want that dimension, honey. I'm gonna go almost to the ends. And again, it's gonna look really dark and strange until we put the last and final toner on all this, but I swear it's going to be awesome. Okay, so we made that low light right there and that's beautiful. All right, and let's move fast because this is already processing and we don't want it to process unevenly throughout the head. Just go over this and bring this down a tad. All right, so we have a low light and a highlight and then we'll take the next section. And the reason why I'm doing it horizontally is because that is how the hair is going to lay. We wanna try and look at how the hair is gonna lay when it's styled, low light and highlight based off of that. All right, I'm gonna add another really long low light here because we want the underneath to be pretty dark, um, but I'm not gonna go as far down this time. I'm just gonna go like a third of the way that we just did before. That looks good. I love converting double process bleach and tones to a highlighted look. I feel like it's just so easy and so effective and I love both of those things. So we're gonna leave this strand out, but we're gonna bring down this a tad. And then of course guys, when it starts processing, you can really look at it. Now this low light is gonna be pretty smoky. I think I said that before, but it's definitely gonna be much more on the ash tone side, which I usually prefer. I don't know, it depends on the person, but yeah. So don't be alarmed if it turns gray a little bit. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add a low light right here just because I feel like it needs it. If you don't know hair that well, maybe this isn't the right application method for you, but I happen to love stuff like this where it's kind of just you're eyeballing it and you're really making an art piece out of the hair. And that is the reason why, you know, professional hair color costs so much money is because it really is art to a lot of us. And we are creating a masterpiece of sorts on your head. And um, not a lot of people can do that properly. All right, you can see the low lights starting to process here. I'm gonna bring this piece down a bit more. You can always work again through it, you know, change your mind and that is gonna do it. All right, so now that we have that first little bit done, Let's move on to the top. I like to work from the bottom up. It's really annoying to try and get the hair out of the way when it's already colored on the top and you work your way down. Let's go in here and just color those roots and however you would like. Now I tend to go in a different pattern when I'm just quickly applying the root color. So I'm taking, you know, a vertical section and applying the root color, and then I'll go in horizontally after to reapply. That way you know that you're getting every single spot. Now this is sort of one of those processes that are gonna look really messy and crazy um, until it's all washed out. All right, we have all the roots painted and exaggerate some of it. Thank you. 
Now you're gonna feel like you're doing maybe a lot of low lights, right? Like I'm gonna paint this entire section. The weird part about it is that when you wash it out, it never looks that crazy. Like it doesn't look like you put chunks of low lights in. When you do like a very little amount of it, it just doesn't look like anything. So I recommend, you know, doing more than you might think is necessary of low lighting and it'll have the perfect effect. Let's bring that root way down. Now you can even weave in highlights and lowlights. I'm gonna leave that out as a highlight, paint that in, and then I'm gonna take all of this hair and just paint it with our low light formula. Boom, dimension, honey. Let's let down our foils and let's go in between them and add some root dimension. Now don't paint the lines too straight across this way. You'll literally have lines in your hair. What I'm doing is painting a few strands down a little further so it gives kind of variation in height of low light. All right, and that is it for this entire side. Now I'm just gonna gently place it in the other direction so we don't end up painting it again. And it looks a little bit messy, I know, but I swear it's gonna be so good. It already looks amazing. You can see all that darkness coming through already. It's dark, like it's dark, but it won't look that crazy once we have the rest of the hair in more of an ash tone. All right, let's just let that process and don't touch it. And I'm gonna do the other side really quickly and come back and show you how the back is done, which is the fun part, it's the easiest part because people don't really see the back a lot and nobody really cares about the back. Um, I like to do the front first because I have the most patience with the sections I start with. Um, if I do the back first and the front last, I end up just like being burnt out by that. So it ends up not looking as good as it could. So I like to start in the front and that's my little secret, okay? Okay, that is the front all complete. Oh, I love when I'm done with the front. It means I'm halfway done and the back is easy. Okay. All right guys, so I have finished the first portion of the coloring. This is the part where we're using that really dark color and you don't wanna screw it up. You don't wanna get it on the ends. You don't, you don't wanna get it anywhere. If you're not as experienced maybe, or you're just not comfortable laying the dark hair onto the light hair, which is, can be kind of sketchy, but this is a wig, so I'm not too worried, but I just really gently lay the hair on top of the dark hair and it doesn't touch and it's all good. But sometimes I will use Saran Wrap to cover my sections of low lights while I'm working through the hair. And just like the front, I worked from the bottom up. I just freehand painted low lights in where I felt like it was needed. I did a lot more at the bottom than at the top because hair Hair is usually darker underneath and lighter on top because the sun is hitting your hair from the top. So I just really freehanded based off kind of my imagination and how I want the highlights and lowlights to land. Um, that does take experience. If you're not as experienced, it might be very hard for you, but that is just how I like to work. And as you can see, this side has started processing and this side hasn't really, but it looks amazing. That root color is gorgeous. Now, when I rinse all this off in about 20 minutes, it's gonna look weird. It's gonna look really weird and not good, but we have another process to do after this with color and I'll show you guys what that is in a few moments once I have this all rinsed off and I'll show you what the result of this round is and it's not gonna look good and then we're gonna do the actual finishing round where it's all gonna come together and make a beautiful low light highlight hair painted balayage style masterpiece it's gonna look great I'm excited about how this is processing it looks amazing and yeah Cool. I'll see you guys when this is all rinsed off. Oh! I'm starting to go crazy. That's what happens every single time I record a wig video like this. Actually, it looks amazing. Um, I'm really happy with these results. As you can see, she looks like she's been foil highlighted, but all we did was a root shadow. Kind of really cool. Um, and it didn't take a ton of time. Uh, of course, I was working on a wig, so it took a little bit more time, but normally it would be really quick. Now that we have this all rinsed out, we're gonna now apply the all over glaze 
phrase or tone or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to be using Guy Tang My Identity in the colors Pearl mixed with Golden Sand and it's going to give us a really beautiful cool toned neutral without it being too cool toned. You'll see what happens. If you're not a hairstylist, it means nothing to you, but I'm going to show you what happens here. You could do a root glaze now um, on top of this, but I don't think she needs it. Like if I wanted to blend in those highlights a little bit more, I would do a root glaze with the end glaze, which is this. But I actually really like that the highlights start at the root. I think it just looks good. So I'm going to leave it alone and I'm just going to put this all over, let it sit for, I think it's like five or 10 minutes. I can't remember, but I'll look that up. Um, and then I'm going to rinse it out and we'll get styling. We're gonna let that sit for however long I'm supposed to let it sit for, which I don't know how long that is. I'm gonna rinse it off. It's already looking incredible. It's getting that like sandy, pearly tone. Oh, I love it so much. And then we're gonna come back after it's rinsed off, do a little bit of cutting, a little bit of styling, and pull it all together. It's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. Okay, so I started blow drying a little bit because I got really impatient, <laughs> but I'm loving the outcome of this. It's such a beautiful blonde. I am obsessed. I want it on my head. I think it's gonna look so good on me because if I never look good in wigs, so maybe not, but um, I'm so excited about this. It's gonna look so much better when it's all dry and styled, but it looks amazing and it's exactly what I wanted it to come out. It looks much more natural than what we started with, so I'm really happy. I'm gonna get started styling her hair. I'm gonna do a loose beach wave kind of a messy beach wave. I'm gonna use electric rain moisture cream in order to hydrate these ends and make them feel and look brand new again. And then I'm gonna blow dry heat style with a curling iron, maybe a flat iron, maybe make a loose kind of fun beach wave. I don't know yet, we'll see what happens. I'm excited. Okay, I am like three quarters of the way done here. We're making progress. Um, as you can see, I'm doing this really light, light beach wave, but it's so pretty. Um, I'm gonna show you quickly how I do that. It's super easy. You just need to have skill with the Marcel iron. And if you don't know what that is, I'll show you in a second. I'm using um, Beach Club by IGK to texturize the hair. This is gonna add hold and make it kind of PC looking. <laughs> so this is a Marcel iron. I think this is a uh, three quarters of an inch. It opens like that. So there's no spring on it, so you can easily twist it. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's a super amazing tool. That is super helpful when doing beach styles. Um, okay, so I am gonna take a piece, put it in there, twist halfway, drop it out. 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 And that's it. And then you get this really tiny little ringlet curl. And then we end up combing that out after, which I'll show you, but that's all you really do. It's super fun, it's super easy. I love doing this because it makes the styling go by really fast um, and it's really pretty. Now let it cool down for a second. I don't have any patience, so that's a very quick few seconds for me. And you get those beautiful beach waves. Ah, uh, look how pretty that is. I'm obsessed. It's crazy to think where this wig started and now it's here. Color and styling is wild. It's a wild thing. I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna put the finishing touches on this wig. I'm gonna cut the lace off with a little razor um, and make it a little bit jagged so it's not perfect. That's a great way to blend in the lace to your real skin. Um, otherwise, if you cut it straight across, it's a very harsh line. I'm gonna do that really quick. We're gonna finish up the style and I'm gonna plop it on my head and I'm gonna look like an idiot, but that's okay. Actually, hopefully this is kind of cute on me. I feel like it might be. We'll see. I just take one of these eyebrow razors and you can just cut along the lace and make it a little bit jagged, but I'm not gonna do that until it's on my head. Um, and I'm not gonna do that on camera because it's way too difficult for me. So I'll see you when the wig is plopped on my head and I'll show you guys the finished result. Woo! I'm excited to finish this up. It's been 10,000 hours. Okay, you guys, so. <laughs> I look crazy <laughs> like I do in every single wig video. Yeah, but I love the wig. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you in three, two, one.
I feel um, like a Lauren or like a Whitney or like whatever, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, I absolutely love it. Like if this was on a girl and this was glued down, it would look stunning. I mean, hello, look at this color. It's like a bronzy, silvery tan blonde and I'm obsessed with it. You guys, isn't it crazy how it looks like we did foil highlights on this? and all we did was basically a toner. Um, it's crazy what you can do when you know good toning techniques and how to do a nice root drop. I spent not a lot of time coloring this. The outcome is so stunning and it looks like we spent days doing it. It's amazing that she came from, you know, that yellowy blonde, uh, platinum blonde, all over one color. And then we ended up with this, like what? How is that possible? Hello, I love a good transformation. I feel like I'm embracing my like, Tarzan life right now, but also like Whitney life. Like, I don't know. I love these waves. This is a great technique to use at home on yourself. Um, it's super easy to get that kind of beach wave if you know how to use a Marcel iron. No, I can work it for sure. For sure. No, I can't. No, I can't. I don't have the head or the face for wigs. It's so upsetting. <laughs> But like, whatever, you know? It was so much fun for me to do a wig that isn't totally like colorful and crazy because this is the stuff that I excel at is like natural colors. I just find it very therapeutic for me to transform hair from, you know, yellow nastiness to stuff like this. Um, I just think it takes a lot of hard work and talent and a lot of skill and I just love doing it. Update you guys. Um. It looks a lot better with the side part. I was playing around with it and I was like, you know what? I look way cuter with a side part. And I have got to show everybody. It's like way cuter with the side part, right? Like, come on, come on, hello, hello. Mm, just a beach babe. <laughs> just wanted to show you that. It's a very versatile wig and I feel cuter with the side part. Now back to your scheduled programming. So let me know what you guys think of my wig. What is your favorite part about it? This little wave and the beautiful highlighted color we have going on, it's just so fun for me. Anyways, so I am exhausted. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about how to properly color and style wigs. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, at BradMondoNYC. Don't forget to follow my hair care brand, X Mondo Hair on Instagram. We have amazing, fabulous, beautiful products that will make your hair glow and feel amazing. You can also shop the products I use in today's video below. And that is all from me today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life. And I'll see you next time. Bye.